European satellite SMOS, an orbiting data dispenser. Every second, it records an area of one million square kilometers, beaming the footage back to Earth. 800 kilometers below, climate experts in Hamburg are busy analyzing the data. Lars Kaleschka is one of them. He's a sea ice physicist and is using the satellite data to monitor how ice in the Arctic is changing. In September 2012, he found a new record. The ice cap was at its smallest since satellite monitoring began in the 1970s. Kaleshka can also draw on extremely high resolution satellite images, but only for one small area at a time. You can see various structures. You can see open water, and then the older ice that has survived the summer and exhibits ice ridges. That's the kind of thing you can only recognize on this high resolution satellite image. That's why Kaleshka needs more data. He wants to be able to monitor the entire Arctic in detail. We need new technology to be able to conduct the necessary measurements. We need new antenna systems. We need new satellites that can provide us with high resolution images over the entire area. The data that's still missing can be extrapolated by climate researchers. For that, they make use of so-called grid cells that can extend up into the atmosphere or into the depths of the ocean. Variables such as temperature or pressure are determined for each cell. Applying this method, meteorologist Jin Song von Storch has taken on the world's oceans. She uses systems of equations that describe the movements in the ocean. Salt content, temperature, and the speed and direction of currents they all adhere to certain laws, and those laws provide the basic equations for our model. This model could never be calculated by the human brain. It requires a supercomputer like Blizzard at the German Climate Computing Center. Blizzard carries out over 150 trillion calculations per second. We have here the this is basically the laboratory where the climate researchers can do their experiments. We have a lot of different computers here, which are all linked together on an extremely high-powered network so that they can all work together on a problem. The supercomputer has produced something that is so far unique in climate research. A detailed model of the ocean with a resolution of 10 kilometers per pixel complete with water temperature, currents and vortices right down to the very bottom of the sea. The deeper ocean is the big mystery. We don't know enough about it. There are hardly any observations available. But this model provides us with an initial insight into how it looks. An ocean of calculated data. It's another step on the road to mapping out the Earth's entire complex climate system on the computer. <laughs>